Greetings, pustulant pox bearers and the greatest of unclean ones. My name is Lucius, and on today's episode, I'll be covering the Death Guard. Now, the Death Guard in Epic at 6mm scale. Epic Armageddon is what I play, and that's what I've got down here. But what we're doing here is we're going over a Kickstarter, which I recently supported, and that has come to fruition. Um, with all of its stretch goals, which is really good, so I managed to get um, as much of the range as I could. There's still there's a few things missing, but uh, majority of the stuffs here are at least very good stuff as well. Um, and this is from Ankylo Miniatures, and this was released on Kickstarter recently. Ankylo Miniatures, um, look them up. I'll put some links down below. They have um, we have, have sites for everything actually. Uh, they're on Gum Road. They're on Etsy. They're on um, Instagram. I'm sure they're on Facebook and the rest of it. Um, so check them out, um, see what they got. They've got a few different ranges, but this is their Death Guard one, which was released on Kickstarter. And I'm going to be going through this today and showing you how I went and what I think about it. So it's sort of like a, a review, I guess you'd say. So if you like this kind of content, please stay tuned. But subscribe, takes you a second to do, means heaps to us here at the channel. Like, comment, all those things helps the algorithm of death. You know it all. Um, but for now, let's get started. Now, before you are the Plague Warriors, so these were the, I guess, the main reason for the Kickstarter. Plague Warriors are the base of your army. Um, now, what we have here is three different stands uh, that I've put together. And these are the Death Guard Chaos Marines here with the one auto cannon. You have the Plague Marines um, after that, which have no auto cannons. <laughs> and then you have the Havocs at the back here, which have two auto cannons. And that's pretty much those um you can see here detailing them is pretty good um excuse the massive amounts of glue on the bases i'll get into that a little bit later on some of the problems that i did face uh, with printing this but for now those are the plague warriors themselves and there are nine different sculpts just in the general range there okay the second standard item in the kickstarter was these these are the plague zombies um so in epic i'm again using the plague zombie infestation now, I've printed 15 stands of these. That was, that was pretty crazy in itself, uh, each of these individual models. But um, there's six different sculpts. Uh, fairly, very, very, very small. They're like the original Epic models. They're, they're on scale. They're actually the right size, which makes them incredibly tiny. Um, so you've got dudes with their guts out. You've got yeah, your little plague zombie there with a hammer and all sorts of various stages of decay of zombie. So um, those are pretty cool. All right, so next up we have the Elite Plague Warriors, which were, well, after the pre-support were the second stretch goal, uh, which was unlocked. And obviously these are our um, Death Guard Terminators. And there are five different sculpts here. Um, the leader model is from a separate thing, like it's from the actual characters. But you can see the five sculpts here in front of you. And they're pretty cool. They've got like tentacles. There's one of Flail of Corruption there. Heaps of bolters. Uh, one's got a scythe, obviously, auto cannons. And all the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, these are our Plague Terminators. Next up is the third stretch goal, which was the Plague Floater or Plague Drone, as uh, we know them in Epic Armageddon and Death Guard. Um, and these, yeah, look really cool. Um, I think, yeah, I like the, like the mouths and what they've done with the maw there. I think they really capture the essence of that. I haven't based these up yet, but uh, soon will. Fourth stretch goal with these um, Armoured Plague Transports. Obviously, these are uh, Death Guard-specific rhinos. And you can see here, some of the details on these are really cool. Like, first one has a mouth and tentacles. There's one with this weird pipe thing coming out of it and tentacles and then mouths and stuff all over the other one. I really like these. I think the vehicles are done really well within this range. Um, and I'll, I've printed up, I think, 13 of these. Yeah, 13 or so. I'll probably print more if I need to, but... This will do most of my squads for as it stands. So in front of you now we have the Plague Leaders, um, which were the fifth stretch goal. Now, ones at the front here is just the Plague Lord and the Plague um, Standard Bearer there, you can see. Um, I've put those through all my little uh, teams of Marines. The one behind I've used as a Champion of Chaos, so I can like summon on the Greater Demon and all that kind of stuff. So he's all right. And then the guy at the back, really nice model, this one um, is winged demon prince i guess you'd say and he's got a big scythe and um yeah nice wings it's, it's quite a nice model that one actually and i've just modeled that these two here are uh, these two leader stands i'm basically just going to use as alternates um if ever want to use those models within the normal standard squads that i have all right sixth stretch goal was um the plague demons 
Uh, so what we have here is we have a Plague Bearer stand. There's five different sculpts of those at the front. Um, yeah, pretty cool ones. Uh, ones with the swords. They're all got swords, obviously, and guts and stuff hanging out. You've got the Great Unclean one, which is a really cool model. Uh, particularly like this one. It's just got really crisp lines and very defined um, guts hanging out. I think that one's going to be really fun to paint. A couple of also sort of nurgling. There's a nurgling swarm there, and then there's sort of like a fetid bloat tree kind of thing with nurglings all around it at the back there as well. So just as a few little bonus miniatures within there. Um, these I'm really happy with. I think they come out great. It's kind of like the uh, the headpiece, I guess, of this uh, Kickstarter. And then this is what they're calling, this is the seventh um, stretch goal, which was a skirmish plague walker. Um, now, for its size and that, I can assume that this is probably the equivalent of a Fester Titan um, with an Epic Armageddon. That's what I'm going to use it for. The guns seem to line up and the size seems to line up. So I think, um, yeah, Fester Titan is what I'll use it for. I could enlarge it and make it the next Titan up as well. I think you could nearly get away with that with the gun combination as well. Um, so I'll have a look into that and see how I go. But this model, um, really nice. I, I like it. And it comes in three separate parts. So you can, you can print it with the, uh, the two arms and the body, basically. So the eighth stretch goal is these things, uh, which they've called Plague Crawlers. Now, you've got a possessed one and you've got a normal one, which I really like. I like the different alternating things on this. These are awesome models, actually. They're probably my favorite in the range. Now, in the Death Guard range, I'd say these are meant to represent Plague Reapers. So Plague Reapers um, are a, a war engine, basically, with three damage capacity. Has all the stuff like the Demolisher Cannon and everything and the Laz Cannons and Bolters so, and Pus Cannons. So I'm assuming that's what these are. Um, they're a little bit too, too armored to be Land Raiders, I guess. So I'm going to use them as those Plague Reapers. Um, but yeah, as I, as I said, like these models are great. I did actually increase the size of these. I think it was hundred, like 40% I increased the size on these just so they would be bigger for those war engines and kind of stand out on the field a bit more. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of just basic formation here, I've got, you know, I've got here probably like, you know, 2,100 to 2,400 points, depending on the options that I used um, in front of you. And... I'm just going to break that down basically like I normally do with these. I'll just give you a, a bit of an overview. I do, do need to print a few more things for this force, but I'll be looking for those. Maybe a bigger Titan, um, some Land Raiders and stuff would be good as well. So I may have to convert those myself for this range. Um, but what we've got here is we have one zombie infestation. <laughs> uh, these things are just a plague of stuff that you can just teleport onto the field. You know, they're not really good at anything, but just overwhelming the enemy. They can't hold objectives or anything, but you know, you can just overwhelm them with 15 zombies. So it's a 2d6 plus 3 is how many appear on the teleport. So you can just put them right next to someone and just charge them, which is great. Um, now my demon pool, as you can see here, I've got a greater demon and I have six plague bearers. Um, they're pretty cool. Two units of blight drones over here. So they're units of five. So we've got there and there. Now the blight drones, excellent movement. They're something this team really needs um, is good movement. They're also skimmers, and they have an invulnerability save, which is all right, and they've got a couple of little cannons and stuff, so they, they do do pretty good. They're pretty squishy, but they do do good damage, particularly against infantry. But they'd be my main objective grabbers and uh, flankers, I guess you would say. Now, we have a couple of units here of marines. So the first one is a Death Guard retinue, which is this one here. Uh, it has an option of a demon prince, as you can see there, a winged. But what we have here is... These units are broken up into three Death Guards Chaos Marines and three Plague Marines. So that's, for 250 points, that's what you're getting. The difference is really just a keyword. So the Chaos Marines have Indomitable and the Plague Marines have Fearless. And also the Plague Marines don't have an Auto Cannon. So that's the difference there. And then the second unit, um, which is pretty strong, is the Death Guard Heavy Retinue, which is all Havocs. So you've got six units of Havocs, and the only difference with the Havocs really is that they have two auto cannons and one less um, combat, uh, close combat ability. They're not as good in close combat as the other two units, but they have better firefight and they have two auto cannons, so they've got a lot more long range support, these guys. So if you think about it, um, with these, you've got like 12 auto cannon shots at uh, 45 centimeter range, which is pretty good. And they have a Champion of Chaos there as well that they could use. And these could be swapped between the units. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, and following up at the end here, we have our uh, Death Guard Terminator retinue. So the, they're pretty expensive. Hey, 450 points for four models is pretty much off the chain, I reckon. I don't know if they're viable, but they do have teleport. You know, they're very hard to kill with the reinforced armor, thick rear armor. Um, do make them pretty cool. They have two Reaper auto cannons each, so there's eight there. Eight shots at 45. I mean, if you have a look at how cheap these are, these Havocs, you've got 12 shots versus eight. I know they're easier to kill, but, you know, you've got to think about these things too. Another thing I didn't mention is these are all Rhino transported, obviously, um, for those two units. Now, moving right along here too, we do have the Plague Reapers that I was talking about before. I've got two of these in the force. And these are sort of the main punch of the of the force here. Now, they're war engines. They have a 15 centimeter uh, range. Uh, damage capacity of three fearless reinforced armor so they're pretty tough to kill now they're very good um lots of shooting so you know like they've got three twin heavy bolters they've got two las cannons they've got a demolisher cannon and a pus cannon so they've got bp attacks they've got heaps of at and ap attacks um so i think these things are going to be pretty awesome and um, with two of those in the thing that's really giving me some punch in my force and this is complemented of course by the fester titan so the Fester Titan's over here. Now he's got a damage capacity of four with two Void Shields, Reinforced, Fearless, Walker, all those things. Um, he has a Decay Cannon, which is four shots of AP 3+, plus, very good against infantry. And he also has a three BP attack. So he's like a walking artillery piece kind of thing, but really good against infantry. Not so great against um, uh, tanks, but that's why I've got those Plague Reapers there, I guess. So... I think the sort of things that I'd be adding to this force, like that's just an overview of this like 2,000-ish points that I've got in front of you, just from what I've printed so far. But that was the limitation of the Kickstarter itself. There's no other units beyond this um, that I can field. So what I will be doing is I'll, I'll be looking for other files, probably probably get an armored squadron with some land raiders and stuff like that for a bit more punch. I could go a bigger Titan, um, maybe, another, maybe another unit of... Um, uh, marines as well and possibly also some navy would be good like some hell talons or something uh, wouldn't be a bad option as well for this force so that's just how i'm looking at the moment um, and that's kind of where i've gone with this force so just a breakdown i'm just going to go over the sort of the pros and cons i guess of the kickstarter what i found and especially with my printing experience and say so overall uh, the miniatures are fairly good um I really like the vehicles in this one. I like the the demons. I like the you know basically all the vehicles look great. The marines look good. I think the um, you know I know it's in scale, um, but uh, the the zombies really really hard to print. Um, it's just so tiny. Hey, one thing I'd I'd like to say to just my main criticism of this one of this entire Kickstarter is that nothing was pre based and standard. You know what I mean? Like you know here's some here's five variants of stands. Such a better way to go with six millimeter, and I'd even say for ten millimeter as well, uh, because you can imagine just printing these. There's seventy five individual little models there that are all actually in scale at six mil, and it was just insanity. Like imagine a plate of these, I had hundreds of hundreds of miniatures, and it was just so hard to get them off individually without destroying them. You know, in that brittle stage when you're first taking them off, they're they're a bit squishy, and at that small, I probably lost like forty percent of the ones that I printed for that. So I had to do a second plate with and added some more of these into some other stuff that I was doing. So just as a, as a side note there, really, like I think if you work in six mil, you've really got a pre stand and pre base miniatures. Uh, if you're going to 3d print them, I mean, maybe it's just me. I've got, you know, fingers that aren't that dexterous or something. I'm not sure, but like, it, it's just, it, it's very difficult and makes the, I think the time that I spent doing this with each individual model, probably it wasted hours and hours that could have just been pre based and there, there's your models kind of thing um but the, that's just my opinion another uh, criticism i have is none like these are the bases that came uh, the base files that came with the uh, models as well and the kickstarter and none of the circles on the bases actually fit inside the circles so that that was the thing there was no scaling issue that i i didn't change any scaling on the on the actual infantry so standard they didn't fit i'd already printed like you know a whole bunch of uh, bases so i wasn't going to do them again um, and sort of scale them up a little bit, but that is a big, big deal, really. Not really. Like at the end of the day, it's going to be aesthetics because I mean, I'll base these models, and you won't even see the bases, so it's no big deal. But um, it just, you know, just for that continuity, you want things to sort of fit into what you've uh, the files that you've got, I guess. But 
Beyond that, um, they're the only two real criticisms I have of the actual Kickstarter itself. Everything else is really lovely and great. Feels a void um, of something, an army that I have really looked at in the past and thought, oh, there's not really a lot of great models for this. And uh, when I saw this Kickstarter, I just supported it straight away. I mean, the price was great. I mean, you can't, I can't complain about anything really. The price was really good and affordable. So um, big thank you to Ankylo Miniatures. I think they did a really good job. And I'm not endorsed by them in any way. They didn't give me this for free. I, this is just off my own back. Um, I supported this Kickstarter, just just so you know. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, my name is Lucius. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you got to this far, you're a complete and utter legend. You know you are. And we'll keep rocking on here, and you keep being you. And ciao for now. <laughs>